So you went out and bought your first power station. Well, now you're asking yourself, what do I do now? Well, this video is going to tell you everything you need to do right when you buy your first power station. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Jason. Thanks for checking out the video today. Now you guys know there are tons of power stations to choose from and my goal is to educate you guys to avoid the absolute junk on the market. So I come up with these reviews. I actually made a power station grading system as well to help you guys to choose the best power station for your use case. So let's say you've gone through, watched the reviews, you checked out the power station grading system, you know which ones you wanna buy, you bought it and now it's showed up at your house. Now what? Now the first thing you wanna do is inspect the package for damage and also open it up to make sure all the contents are there. So let's go ahead and open it up. Now one little quick tip, you definitely wanna keep the packaging, so either store it in your attic or maybe in your basement somewhere. If you ever have to return it, then you're gonna want the original packaging. Also, if you're ever gonna to wanna to resell your power station, you get a lot more value if you have the original packaging, so make sure you keep it around. Okay, so now that we have everything unboxed, we've made sure there's no damage on the power station. Uh, we have all the owner's manual warranty stuff and the adapters. Let's go ahead and plug it in to charge it up. We want to get it fully charged up. It will ship around 50 to 60%. So once we plug it in and it's charging, it's a great time to go through and review the owner's manual. Make sure you always review the owner's manual on your power station, especially right when you buy it, because you'll actually probably find some stuff that you didn't understand when you first bought it. So you can see it's charging up at 206 watts. We got a little bit of time to kill, so let's go ahead and read the manual. A few moments later. Okay, so now that your power station is fully charged up, it's really important to do a capacity test to make sure that you can get something near what it's advertised at. This will tell you if your power station is broken or not. Now there's a lot of really complicated ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way to run a capacity test at home on your power station. Now what you wanna do is have a constant load like a box fan. Now this box fan here is super cheap at a store. Most people have these. This will pull around 100 watts on high. So this power station is rated at 537 watt hours. Watt hours is a way to measure the capacity inside. With 537 watt hours, we should be able to run this 100 watt fan for around five hours. We want to plug in the fan, turn on the AC inverter and see the wattage that it's gonna pull. If it pulls around 100 watts, then what we can do is track the exact time that it starts all the way until when it shuts off at 0%. And that amount of time is going to tell us how many watt hours we pulled. For example, the fan pulling 100 watts, if it ran for only one hour, then that means we pulled 100 watt hours from the battery. If it ran for three and a half hours, that means we pulled 350 watt hours. And if it ran for four and a half hours, which is probably where we'll get with this, that means it would have pulled 450 watt hours. So this is a very easy test that you can do at home. So take your box fan, turn on the AC inverter. Now you can see it's pulling 100 watts. So we're gonna say we started the test at this exact time. We're gonna track it and right when it gets to the end, really find out the exact time it shuts off. Take that amount of time and times it by 100 and that will give you the amount of watt hours that is in your batteries. So let's go ahead and run the test and let your battery get all the way down to 0%. Now this capacity test example is basically for any power station that's right around 500 watt hours. So if you have a larger power station, you're gonna to have to up your load. Now the easy way to calculate that is you take your power station watt hours and you times it by 0.2 and that will give you your 20% load because you wanna discharge this in a reasonable amount of time because you don't want it running for two days. Because remember, we're running off the AC inverter and if you're running for an extremely long amount of time and you have a really small load, then the AC inverter is gonna use a lot of that background power, so the tracking that you're getting is not gonna be fully accurate. Uh, just make sure that you adjust the load. So if you have a 300 watt hour power station, times it by 0.2, that'll give you the load. And then you may have to adjust this down to level one or two. Or if you have a, you know, a larger power station, you're probably gonna to have to have either multiple fans or maybe uh, multiple heat lamps, something like that to test this out. But let's say we took this all the way down to 0%, it shut off. Hopefully you track the exact amount of time, go ahead and times that by whatever your load wattage is and that will give you your watt hours. But now that this is at 0%, I think it's a great time to show you guys how to charge it up using solar panels. Okay guys, we're outside. Let's go ahead and do a solar charging demo on the power station. Now you see I have the power station, a 100 watt solar panel, the charging adapter for solar panels, and a can. Let me go ahead and show you why the can is important. 
Now to get the most power out of your solar panel, you want to align it so that you don't get any shadow. And so if you have the can on here and there is no shadow at all, that means the solar panel is going to have the most efficiency because it's facing exactly at the sun. Now on the back of a rigid glass panel, you have these connections called MC4 connections. They're a waterproof uh, connection for electricity. And then you have your solar adapter cable that comes with the power station and these connect together. So you take them, they only go one way, you plug these in like so. And now we have the panel connected up to the power station. Let's see what power we're getting in. Okay guys, we're getting 100 watts input from this 100 watt panel. So that's pretty awesome that we're actually getting its rated output. So this would take around five hours to completely charge up if you were at 0% capacity. Now, if you guys are interested, I'm pretty impressed with this panel so far. This is the Bouge RV 100 watt 9BB solar panel. And uh, I do have a 180 watt solar panels over there. Those are the 5BB model. And then I have some 325 watt solar panels over there. Now these are for my bigger power stations, but a small 100 watt panel like this works really well with these 500 watt power stations. Now, one little tip, you never wanna have your power station sitting in the sun. It will cause it to overheat. So you can see I'm actually using the shade of the solar panel to keep it cool and that will work just fine. Okay, so that was just a brief solar demo of using a glass rigid panel. Now, I do tests on all different types of solar panels. Now, if you're ever confused about any of this information, just head to my website. You can find information on power stations, solar panels, and also 12 volt compressor fridges. I give all the best products listed there, and I also have a discounts code page to get the best price. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more portable, um, I have the XTAR SP100 here. This is kind of my go-to recommendation for a folding panel. This is a bifold panel, so the halves are a little bit bigger, but it's ETFE. It puts out around 113 watts. Excellent panel. And uh, this one comes with all the adapters you need um, to hook into any uh, power station. It just comes with a ton of different adapters. Um, this one is a little bit expensive, but it puts out a lot of good power. Um, another budget option is the Elicanta. This is an ETFE uh, quad fold. So this one, um, really good ETFE coating here. Um, I use this one all the time as well. And this is very similar to the Balder 120. Now, if you're looking to have a solar panel outside all the time, I recommend using a glass rigid panel. If you're gonna be using it for just temporary purposes, you know, camping, or, you know, if the power's out, uh, portable panels are a great way to do that. So hopefully you were able to get a good amount of power into your power station via the solar panel. Now that we've done a capacity test, we've tested charging both ways and the battery's pretty much full. Let's go ahead and test just the remaining outputs. Now it's important to just make sure that everything works. So we're gonna just briefly test the USB ports. So a lot of power stations, you'll just have a way to turn on the USB and then you can plug in uh, a USB light. So you can test all four ports, make sure they all work. So that's all four of those and those work. So that's uh, one way to test the USB ports. The other way to test um, would be the USB-C output. You can just plug in a USB-C cable. Let's just take my phone and we can plug that in there. Uh, make sure this charges. And yes, it starts charging. So we've tested uh, the USB ports. Go ahead and turn that off. And the last thing to test would be the 12 volt output. So you can just take any 12 volt device uh, you go ahead and just plug that in, turn on the output, and then this is a really cool fan, so you can have uh, low mode, and it pulls around four watts, and then high mode pulls around uh, seven to eight watts, I believe. So, um, you guys have uh, ever seen one of these? This is called the O2 cool fan or the Tiva fan. It has a 5521 connector here. So if you just get a 5521 12 volt plug, instead of using the D size batteries in the bottom, you can just plug it into your power station, basically run it unlimited. So now that we've tested all the outputs, we've tested the AC inverter, we tested the DC output, we've tested the USB outputs, we've tested charging it. And uh, if you had wireless charging, you could test that on the EB55 because it does have wireless charging on the top. And on the back, maybe just the last thing you'd wanna make sure is the light, does it work? And it does. So um, that's basically how you'd wanna test your power station. Okay, well now that you've verified everything is working, what do you do with it? Do you just put it in your closet and let it sit there? 
you know, keep it at 100%, see what happens? Or are you going to use this every single day? Now, I always make the argument to use your power station. You invested the money into it. I think it's a great thing to use every single day. For example, you could power TVs, clocks, lamps, some small appliances. Just make sure that your appliances stay within the rated output of the inverter. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, power stations that have lithium iron phosphate in them, like this, which is the type of battery, this can get 2000 life cycles before it hits 80% of the original capacity. So that means I can use this for 5.5 years every single day and still have 80% of the capacity left. Now, by the time 5.5 years goes away, you're probably gonna be wanting to invest in a better power station. So my argument is use it every single day. You invest the money into it, you have solar panels, why not use it and get some of that cash back? So uh, just make sure you're familiar with it. Now, of course, you could put it away in a closet. Now, if you're going to be planning to do long term storage on these, it's best to store them around 85 to 80 percent. Now, if you want to make this last even longer, um, you know, 2000 cycles is where you take it from 100 percent down to zero percent every single time. If you want to make this last a lot longer, you can maybe charge it up to 80 percent and take it down to 20 percent and you'll probably get even double the actual cycles to 80%. So you'll probably get 4,000 cycles versus the original 2,000 because you're not treating it as hard. So pretty cool that uh, there's so many ways to use these power stations. Hopefully you guys found this information helpful. Did you guys think of anything else that you'd wanna do when you first test your power station or you first get it? Let me know, throw a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this very simple video. It was really fun to do. And hopefully it's really good for you guys that are just getting into power stations. Now just remember, I do have my power station grading system and a ton of reviews on this. So if you guys are looking for a power station that meets your needs, you may want to check that out. I'll have that down in the video description. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. We'll see you guys in the next one.